Hello, I welcome you all in this course on refrigeration and air conditioning. Today we will continue with psychometric processes. Today we will discuss mixing of air stream, summer air conditioning, hot and humid outside when the weather is hot and humid outside, summer air conditioning when the weather is hot and dry outside, <laughs> single cooling coil and mixing, single cooling coil and bypass mixing. The mixing of return air with the fresh air, this mixing is mixing of return air with the fresh air. So, first one is mixing of air stream. If there are two air streams, one and two, this is one air stream, another air stream, air stream and they get mixed at one point and another stream is formed that is stream 3. Because <laughs> we are doing this exercise because in air conditioning, we will be frequently mixing the air, return air with the fresh air or return air with the air outside the, uh, after the coil, cooling coil. So, <coughs> concepts of the mixing should be very clear in mind before we switch over to the real air conditioning processes. So, if there are two streams, stream 1 and stream 2 and they get mixed and form stream 3, mass flow rate in stream 1 is M1 mass flow rate in stream 2 is M2 and mass flow rate in stream 3 is M3. Now, by <laughs> law of conservation of mass, we can always write M1 plus M2 is equal to M3. This is an adiabatic mixing of two streams, so there is no heat transfer. M1 plus M2, <laughs> when their enthalpies are added then M1 H1 plus M2 H2 is equal to M3 H3. So, enthalpy of stream 1 plus enthalpy of stream 2 is equal to enthalpy of stream 3. One more relation we can draw here that is W1 H1 sorry. M1 W1 plus M2 W2 is equal to M3 W3. There are three relations uh, which will be governing the mixing of two air streams. Now, W is specific humidity or humidity ratio W1 W2 W3 is specific humidity of a stream 1 specific humidity of stream 2 and specific humidity of stream 3. Now, after mixing of a stream, now we can start with summer air conditioning hot and humid outside, summer air conditioning, summer air conditioning hot and humid. Hot and humid means <laughs> you can take example of any coastal climate. Now, for hot and humid climate, we can take hot and humid climate as let us take some value for dry bulb temperature, we can take 35 degree centigrade and humidity may be 70 percent. That is a typical coastal climate, dry bulb temperature or outside temperature is 35 degree centigrade and relative humidity is 70 percent. Now, inside condition we will maintain this one 24 degree centigrade temperature and 50 percent relative humidity, 24 degree centigrade dry bulb temperature and 50 percent relative humidity. Now, we have come from this point 1 to this point 2. We cannot directly come from this point to this point, we have to follow certain psychometric processes. So, here as I discussed earlier also that uh, for such type of situation cooling with dehumidification is done. So, cooling with dehumidification. So, through cooling and dehumidification we can follow this line and then we can come here and after this at appropriate point the heating can be done and we will be getting this point. 
So, for this type of arrangement, we should have a duct having dampers, filter, then a cooling coil, a cooling coil, air is blown over the cooling coil and after the cooling coil, there is a heater and after the heater, the air is sent to the room. So, after the heater, air is sent to the room, direction of flow is this one and from the room, it will go to the surroundings. <laughs> so, the process 1, the state 1 will be at the entry of the cooling coil, this is state 1, then state, this is state 2, this is let us say state 3, this is state 3. This is state 3, we will get at the entry of uh, uh, heating coil, this is a heating coil and after the heating coil, the air will enter the room. So, this is the room supply condition. These coils do have some bypass factor. So, if we take into the consideration bypass factor, in that case, suppose room, sub here we are getting supply temperature approximately. 13 degree centigrade, since this coil has bypass factor. So, coil temperature is 13 degree centigrade, bypass factor is 0, we will be getting air at this point at 13 degree centigrade. Since every coil has certain bypass factor, suppose this coil has a bypass factor of 0 0.1 or 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 any value. In that case, for the purpose of cooling, this temperature of cooling coil shall be less than 13 degree centigrade. So, the cooling coil temperature has to be maintained somewhere <laughs> below this depending upon depending upon the bypass factor. Higher the bypass factor, lower is going to be this temperature. Suppose <laughs> we find that the cooling temp coil temperature has to be 10 degree centigrade, then <laughs> this dehumidification will continue up to 10 degree centigrade and we can draw this, we can join these two points we can join these two points and through a straight line, we can join these two points through a straight line and this is the process and we will be getting certain value of temperature which is higher than 13 degree centigrade. If I depict the process here, this I think on the board it will be clearer to you. This is a psychometric chart and this is cooling and dehumidification process, but this process has certain bypass factors. So, instead of cooling up to here, it will get cooled up to here. And from here, air will be heated up to the room temperature, right. So, this air which is getting heated in the heater, in ideal case it was a saturated vapor, but here it is not a saturated vapor. It is vapor slightly higher than temperature 13 degree centigrade, right. <laughs> Similarly, we can consider bypass factor for heater also. So, heater has to be not only at 24 degree centigrade, maybe 26 degree centigrade in order to accommodate the bypass factor. So, this is the air conditioning process for summer where dehumidification and heating is required. Now, another type of climate is the climate where the weather is hot and dry, weather is hot and dry outside. Before I start this hot and dry weather, we should understand <laughs> that what will happen if I mix two streams, suppose one situation is this, it is very humid, hot and humid air and there is very cold and humid air. If I mix these two streams, if I mix these two streams, stream A and stream B let us say in a 50-50, I will be some, somewhere here. Now, what will be the situation of air in this position C? In the position C or state C, a fog will be formed, a fog will be formed and 
the air will become foggy. <laughs> so, such type of situation may also arise where highly humid, very cold air and highly humid hot air mixing is there. In that case, we can get <laughs> the state of fog as well. <laughs> now, coming back to summer air conditioning when the weather is hot and dry outside. Now, hot and dry weather let us assume outside temperature is 40 degree centigrade and relative humidity is relative humidity is 10 percent. This is 10 percent relative humidity line and outside temperature is 40 degree centigrade. So, it is a typical desert weather dBT is 40 degree centigrade and relative humidity is 10 percent or 15 percent or 20 percent we can take any value. I mean this is a typical of hot and dry weather, hot and dry outside. Now, in this situation best way is in hot and dry weather is whenever there is a low humidity, we can always make use of evaporative cooling process, because evaporative cooling process, process is low cost process and can be easily attained. Evaporative cooling means we will have to follow the wet bulb temperature line, but here in this case if we follow the wet bulb temperature line will not be coming to this state. In, in this situation either at 24 degree centigrade the, uh, the relative humidity will be around 60, 60 percent or if you want to maintain the relative humidity then the air will be on sli slightly higher temperature of 26 degree centigrade either here or here. If, if you are maintaining humidity 50 percent then temperature will be higher. If you are maintaining uh, temperature as 24 degree centigrade in that case humidity will be higher. So, in order to avoid this situation <laughs> sensible cooling is done, a sensible cooling of air is done from let us say from state 1 to state 2 and after sensible cooling when we are on the wet bulb temperature line passing through this point evaporative cooling can be done and we can attain this state. Right? Suppose the relative humidity of outside temperature is 45 degree centigrade, relative humidity is 10. So, if the outside temperature is 45, relative humidity is 10, you are somewhere here. So, now if you do the evaporative cooling right, right from this point, the humidity will be 70 percent too high or more than 70 percent, 75 percent at 24 degree centigrade. That may not be acceptable or if I want to maintain the humidity in that case the dry bulb temperature will be around 29 degree centigrade. 29 degree centigrade uh, temperature shall not provide the required comfort. So, in this case also sensible cooling shall be done up to this point. This is let us say uh, point 0.3 and this is point 0.4. Sensible cooling will be done up to this point the up to this temperature 32 point 5 degree centigrade. Here the sensible cooling was done 36 degree centigrade and then uh, evaporative cooling shall be done. And arrangement for this type of climate will be first of all some dampers will be provided right then filters after that cooling coil and for evaporative cooling an air washer shall be provided. Air washer shall spray uh, uh, the water in air and due to evaporation of water this cooling will take place. <laughs> now, here also we can consider the bypass factor similar in a similar fashion as we considered in the case of hot and humid environment. Now, after this <laughs> we will take up single cooling coil and mixing process. Now, mixing is often done in air conditioning systems because why mixing is done? Mixing is done in order to save energy. Now, fresh air is taken from outside <laughs> part of the fresh, fresh taken air is taken from outside temperature of the fresh air is 42 degree centigrade. The air which is leaving the room is at let us say 27 degree centigrade. So, now cooling 27 degree centigrade air will is much easier or I mean much uh, uh, is less expensive than the cooling air at 42 degree centigrade. So, here mixing of a stream comes into the picture. 
outside air is at 42 degree centigrade. Air which is leaving the room, let, let us say T, T x is 27 degree centigrade. So, if I want to cool this air, definitely I will be saving a lot of energy. But cooling from 42 to the required temperature and cooling from 27 to required temperature. But I cannot use this air 100 percent because if I make 100 percent recirculation, the quality of air will reduce, oxygen content of air will reduce, uh, carbon dioxide content will increase and it is not advisable. So, part of this air is mixed with this, let us say 50, 50, 50 percent of this, 50 percent of this. So, the average temperature will be, if I take 50, 50 mixing, then 27 by 2, that is uh, 69 by 2 is approximately 34.5. So, air entering the coil will not be at 42 degree centigrade, it will be 34.5 and it shall be <coughs> meeting the requirement of oxygen and <coughs> diluted pollutants. So, this mixing is done basically in order to reduce the load on the plant. Now, we will take the mixing cases one by one. Now, the first mixing case is single coiling coil and mixing. Now, in this case, there is a cooling coil which cools the air and this air the goes to the room, there is a room and after cooling in the room, after leaving the room, let us say this is which is going into the room, this is outside air state 1, from state 1 it is entering the coil, leaving the coil at state 2, then entering the room at state 2 and leaving the room at uh, let us say state 3. At state 3, part of the air leaving the room is mixed with 1 and we get state 4. And now this is state 4, the actual diagram is this mixture of state 3 and state 1 is entering the coil, getting cooled there, then it is going to the room and the part of the air is vented outside and part of the air is again goes go for, <coughs> goes for uh, recirculation. Now, if I want to depict this process on psychometric diagram, now here suppose at uh, 35 degree centigrade and uh, let us take some example 35 degree centigrade and uh, um, 70 percent relative humidity some uh, coastal climate right and uh, this air is mixed with the return air which is at uh, let us say uh, 26 degree centigrade and 60 percent relative humidity. So, this is state 1 outside air and this is state 3 air which is leaving the room. Now, these two streams air streams they are mixed. If it is 50 50, the mixture will be at the exactly at the middle of this line. I am just taking the approximate position and that is going to be state 4. In this type of mixing, the mixing is done because geometrically we have to do it or mathematically also we can do. Uh, geometrically, <laughs> suppose there is a pH diagram, there is a mixing from 1 to 3, this is 50 50. So, m 1 by m 3 is equal to suppose this is A and this is B. So, m 1 by m 3 is going to be uh, A by B in reciprocal, m 1 by m 3 is going to be A by B, length of this divided by length of this or we can take in terms of dry bulb temperature also difference in dry bulb temperature also. So, difference in dry bulb temperature between this point and this point is A, difference in dry, dry bulb temperature between this point and this point here. 
We can take projection on y axis also where the specific humidity is there, then again the difference in specific humidities, difference in specific humidities can also be considered in order to find the ratio. So, once ratio is with us, we can easily locate the point 4 either with the help of temperature or with the help of a specific humidity or simply by taking the geometrical value <laughs> through this reciprocal equation. Now, state 4 is attained. Now, after state 4, it passes to the room rest of the process remains same coil temperature let us say it is 14. So, it will come here and then coil temperature it will be. So, this is the next process cooling and dehumidification, cooling and dehumidification. If bypass factor is there then instead of sorry you want to. So, coil temperature has to be higher than this. So, suppose the coil temperature is 10 degrees centigrade because if it if I take coil temperature 15 degree centigrade, I may not be able to attain this position or this supply condition, this <laughs> room condition. So, the temperature of the coil is less than this approximately 10 degree centigrade. It has some bypass factor also. So, instead of being supplying at 10 degree centigrade, air may be supplied at let us say here at uh, 13.5 degree centigrade and then heating can be done and we will get the desired state. So, here I have missed the heater. So, one heater is also here, one heater is also here because cooling and then heating, cooling and then heating and that is how we are getting the state of the supply here. Now, the last one is single cooling coil and bypass mixing. Now, here in this arrangement after the cooling coil, after the cooling coil mixing of this air can also take place, after the cooling coil mixing of this air can also take place. So, part of this air now there are three places mixing is taking place at three places 1 and 3 this is also 3 this is also 3 1 and 3 here and 3 and after cooling in the cooling coil mixing is taking place. So, for such a situation this is the return air it is very simple to locate this is our return air this is our supply air. So, now mixing is taking place after the cooling coil between this point and this point and we will get finally this point maybe point 4 at point 4 the vapor will be or sorry the air will be entering the room. In actual practice the temperature of supply air is not 24 degree centigrade for the sake of understanding only I have taken temperature 24 degree centigrade. Normally temperature supply temp, uh, temperature of the supply air ranges between 13 to 17 degree centigrade it is known as grill temperature. So, suppose in this room I want to maintain certain temperature of 24 degree centigrade, room will have some sensible load and latent load and temperature may be let us say 17 degree centigrade. So, this or 15 degree centigrade we can take 15 degree centigrade supply temperature and then return air temperature may be at uh, 25 degree centigrade and 50, 50 percent relative humidity and this is the load line. The load line we will discuss later on. This is room load line and this room load line we will discuss later on. I have assumed supply temperature 24 degree centigrade for the sake of convenience and for the sake of convenience of understanding these processes. <coughs> Likewise, we can have number of combination of the processes in order to attain the desired state of air in the room, but we must understand that whatever process we adopt it should be energy efficient. We, sh we can come from this point to this point we can come by other methods also, but <laughs> those methods will be energy consuming and therefore, this is the most convenient way of attaining this state. <coughs> this, this is all for uh, this lecture 
and in the next lecture we will continue with the psychometric processes.